Kobe, Kobe, say hello. Speak. <laughs> okay, Kobe. <Cody. laughs> we have Sarah. <laughs> And we have my brother Daniel. So when you're out here and there's limited comfort, you gotta find comfort in any any small places you can. So uh, every morning you gotta start off with a cup of coffee, hot coffee of course. Quite a bit of trial and error on our part, but I think we've uh, I think we found the right mix for our cup of coffees. Do you believe he's found the right mix, or is this all just lies? <laughs> no, this is the perfect mix. Look at look at the good boys. <laughs> Something from me. What's up, bro? Let me check my fanny pack. Oh, wait, wrong one. Here we go. Bro, why? I'm so dirty <laughs> right now. <laughs> okay. 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 Bro, I'm telling you. Be careful. Wow. I can't believe he's really doing the thing. Wow, my boy is really doing the thing. I'm over here trying to make breakfast with my my girl and he just popped up on us. One of the huge things about camping is not being able to shower, but there is literally a shower out house kind of thing here, camping zone. Now let's see what this, this looks like. Okay, got a little towel rack and everything. Oh man, it comes with shampoo, conditioner, and body wash. We have actual temperature controls, minimum to max. And he said this thing gets up high, like we're super high. And then the moment of truth. I'm not gonna lie though, it's super, super chilly out here. It feels weird that I can say hey to Sierra and Daniel and I'm out here just showering. Hey Kobe. Propane tank for that shower and then the solar panels. And you got the water supply right here and right there. Now I don't know why he has this, maybe to keep animals out or to keep it from blowing over. Got some uh, some hand sanitizer right there, and some toilet paper. We ran out though, and we got some baby wipes, and the toilet. We'll see how good this is. Okay, you got the little feed stuff in there. Then toilet paper goes in there. Wipe your hands. We definitely need some of that. Honestly, you can't forget hand sanitizer, especially when you're using an outhouse thing like that. But we booked this place with Hip Camp, and it's like Airbnb to where you stay on someone's property and you can camp on that on their grounds. So right behind me, you guys can see that's where the man stays at, and right over there to the right is the campgrounds. And this place is pretty dope. It's honestly really beautiful. So we just realized that if you are a veteran or you're still serving in the United States military, you can get into all the national parks free. So we're loading up into one vehicle so we can save some money. So if you're a veteran, make sure you have your ID card. I never thought I would make it to the Grand Canyon and it just was not on my bucket list. I really wanted to go to Europe and Asia, but this is the place you need to visit if you're coming to the States. It's beautiful and honestly, I don't know why, but I thought the Grand Canyon was just the Colorado River going through it and that was it. But like, this place is massive, first inhabited by Native Americans, multiple different Native American tribes. And then, you know, then you get the conquistadors coming from Spain. But wow, I don't think you can really describe this to anyone until they come see this for themselves. And if you don't believe me, this is how crazy beautiful the Grand Canyon is. Squirrels, animals, nature, breathe in that good fresh air for once. Okay, we stopped for just a second. Look how beautiful this place is. Wow, Arizona and the Navajo Nation, and there is just nothing but just road and emptiness. You gotta love it. What are you doing, Daniel? Goodness. So right now we have a little situation 
We just spotted a small coyote. But this is why it's important to make sure you bring dogs out here when you're camping. If you don't have a dog, rent a dog from one of your best friends. They'll love to get out. So right now we are here with Sierra and her babies. This is Kobe and Coda. Kobe? Yep. Uh -huh. Coda? And they are ready. No one is coming. No one is coming to mess with this campsite. And you know what? It's that same definition of if you mess around, you're going to find out with, from these dogs. Jesus, Daniel, is that a beer? Fuck yeah, let's do it. Like now he's gonna fight. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> let's do it. Let's go, guys. For all of y'all that might think that America is just Miami, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, we have Zion National Park. This is in Utah, and I did not know it was gonna be this beautiful. Like, just, it's stunning. Okay, okay, okay. Y'all gotta admit, this. This view right here is beautiful. And this is why I just feel like you need to just let go and not plan that much. So we're out here at Zion National Park in Utah. My best friend Daniel and his cousins. I'm here with my girlfriend. He's here with his girlfriend. And just, y'all hear that? There's no one else out here. Well, at least not for like half a mile. Is anyone out there? No. See, no one. No one. We're here with Junior, Daniel, one of Daniel's cousins. What's up? What's up? Then we're here with Eddie. Eddie, what are you doing? Eddie, man, we're gonna cut, make this spot a little bit better and gather some free firewood right here, man. I'm Look at you. this baby right here. Look at that. Who knew Californians could be like this out here in the wilderness? Look at this bad boy. Look at that bad boy. <laughs> Look at all that fresh, dry wood. Perfect. <laughs> Alright, let's you start a fire. Hopefully. Well, I guess he got the fire going. Cheers. Cheers. Familia. Why didn't anyone tell me that we had something like Zion National Park here? It's beautiful, looking out at the mountains, waking up and seeing a beautiful sunrise of the mountains. They do have a store here called Zion Outfitters, where basically you can buy pants there, sandals. You can even rent hiking boots. I mean, I don't recommend renting hiking boots because, you know, they can be very smelly from other people's feet. But anyways, you can get food in there, canisters, so you can cook your food out there while you're on the trail. And I can't say this enough, but make sure you bring some Bubba's. And if you don't have a Bubba, rent a Bubba out. And I don't have any, but they definitely brought some Bubba's. <laughs> we have Coda. We have Ollie. And we have Dino over here. And we have Dino. Just chilling. <laughs> Just a good boy. So we're only going on one trail today because here at Zion National Park, you can only take your dogs on one trail. You're not allowed to take them on the bus. I what was the name? I forgot the name, so I'm just gonna put it right here. But we just saw this this cool river. I think it's the the Virgin River, I think. And the dogs are cooling out in it right now. <laughs> you scared for your son's life? A little bit. Uh... <laughs> Man, they love the water. It's Dino, right? Dino. Oh, good boy. Oh. oh. All right, now we need to check on the best friend Daniel and his son Kobe. Kobe, Kobe, you enjoying the water? Where this river is formed 270 million years ago, but these older layers are not yet exposed to the part of the Zion Canyon, so we're seeing some old ass rocks. Do any of y'all know 
places that I can camp at in Europe. And I know Europe is a huge continent. So just narrow it down to some countries, some cities, you know, that have some beautiful camping grounds where I can put up a hammock or something. Put it in the comments because I don't want to just, just go to the Louvre and just go to the beads of Portugal. I want to go somewhere like this, like Zion National Park. Wow. I, let's just take, let everyone, let's just take a moment and just, just look at the mountains. Wow. Okay. Taking in all the beauty, over. So, Sierra hasn't even been on here yet. Sierra, so how, how do you feel about Zion Park so far? It's very hot, but I like it. It's really beautiful. So you've been to a lot of national parks so far. So where does this one <laughs> rank on your list? Uh, I'd probably say out of like the top five, I'd rank it at like maybe a three. Dang, you've been to five already? When you're here at the National Park, don't just walk the trails, don't just hike them. Bring the bubbas, get some food, or make your own food by the river and just enjoy life. Look, even the bubbas are ready for their food. Kobe, are you hungry? Yes. Shut up. What are y'all cooking up? Some chicken teriyaki. All right, so this is the chicken coconut curry. White chicken, rice, and vegetables, and this is 44. 44 grams of protein. I'm telling y'all, this is what you need to do when you're at the state park. Oh, that's a big hunk. Oh, nine out of 10. Damn, Babe, you gotta try this. You don't like it? No, not, not my, not my. It's not your stuff. All right, now we now we're curious on Sierra. Sierra's gonna like it. Let's see. I'll trade you. Mm. Take another bite. <laughs> there y'all go. Somebody sing an anthem. Dogs really are man and woman's best friends. Honestly, just look yes. at that. Coda, you having a good time? <laughs> All gassed out. Zion National Park, y'all have done a great job. At least the Go first trail we've done. So if you're coming to Zion National Park and you don't feel like using your, your legs or you want to get around faster, they actually do offer e-bikes. And uh, I'm here with... My name's Jake. So our e-bikes are $80 for the day. Um, it's kind of a flat, weight, flat rate rental, but they're pedal assist e-bikes. You can go up to about 25, 30 miles an hour with relative ease. Nine gears, four different modes. Nine Gosh, gears? Nine gears, yeah. They're perfect for what you need in the park. So, would yeah. recommend it to anyone. How many trails can you take the bikes on? So you got two trails in the park. You got what's called the Parus Trail and the, the Scenic Drive. The Parus Trail is the actual bike path. It goes from the visitor center to the Scenic Drive. It's about a mile and a half long. And the Scenic Drive itself is about seven-ish miles, give or take. And that goes from Shuttle Stop 3 all the way up to Shuttle Stop 9, which is where the Narrows is. And relatively easy. Just got to be careful the shuttle bus is going up and down. So. All right. I, I appreciate it. And... Uh, I'm Davion, by the way. Jacob, pleasure to nice meet you. Nice meeting you. How's it going? Hey, you too, man. It took us about 34 minutes to go from stop one all the way to stop nine with the free shuttle bus service. Okay, I'm sorry, y'all, but I have not given y'all a proper intro to this beautiful park, Zion National Park. So it goes back thousands of years ago and thousands and thousands of more. But the, this area was first inhabited 8,000 years ago by a group of Native Americans called the Playpleons. I probably slandered that. I, I'm so sorry if I did. These Native Americans were along this bank and everything, and after them, then you get the Europeans with their huge wave coming in here in the 1800s. The thing I really love about travel is just meeting new people, someone asking, you know, hey, can you take our photo, and then learning and hearing about their story. So I just met these two individuals, Pat and Paula. So why did y'all come to the National Park? We started up in Indian country, went through Yellowstone, went through Grand Tetons, and we're going to the other Utah National Parks and ending in the Grand Canyon. I've been here before, she hadn't. I just love this place. And I'm colorblind, <laughs> and I still love everything here. <laughs> so We've been all over the world traveling, but thought it would be a good opportunity to see the United States. So yeah. I'm Davion right. West. Davion, I'm Pat Pope. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Y'all have a lovely day. All right, we'll look for you. This has to be the best river walk I have ever gone on. And even just, okay, yeah, I know. The water is definitely freezing. I do not suggest getting in this water at all. When you walk around this park, there's just beauty and nature everywhere. 
from the Red Cliffs to the Virgin River. I'm sorry, let me give y'all a little better lighting. From the Red Cliffs to the Virgin River, you truly just feel like you could be one with nature here. Stop here and refresh while you're on your way to the Emerald Pool. Okay, y'all, this is the lower Emerald Pool where there's a, it's a little small waterfall, but it's a cute, tiny waterfall. When you're coming down here, though, it's going to be kind of hard because you got to go down a lot of steps and it's like a one lane system. So you got to wait, let the other people come up while you're going down. But watch your step because it's definitely slippery. Bring some good hiking boots. So we're out here at Zion National Park at the Family Ranch. We're about to ride horses. And this is Bambi right here. It's my first time, y'all, riding a horse as a grown man. What's your horse's name, Sierra? Lily. <laughs> That's a pretty name, Hi. Lily. <laughs> Daniel, you look like a natural. <laughs> my third time riding. <laughs> okay, not a bad ride, but I gotta say, being a cowboy must have been pretty hard. What do you think, Daniel? Oh man, what a time to be alive. Riding a horse in Utah, the Zion National Park. Just beautiful. I'm telling y'all, get out, go camping, ride horses, and see more of America. I did not think that Utah was this, was this beautiful, but wow, it really is beautiful. What was his name again, Daniel? Chester. Chester, that, that fits you. Me. Welcome to Sierra. Not just the dog whisperer, but the horse whisperer. <laughs> so we're here at Zion Family Ranch, and we just went on a horse ride, $100 a person for two hours. You got to see the beautiful cliffs here in Utah, and I'm here with... Calvin, right? Okay. So how long has this uh, this ranch been in your, your family, and why do you like uh, taking care of the horses and being here and running this? It's been in our family for five generations, and I'm just attracted to the bonds and ties from the ranching lifestyle it's created, I guess. Well, I appreciate it. It was well, a pleasure. Thanks for coming. Ah, thank you. So there's different levels to camping, and you can come out here, sleep in tents, and eat food out of a bag, or you can be out here mixing up, making your own salsa right here. What are you making right now? Uh, salsa molcajete. What's what? that? It's a salsa that you like cook, you like char it, char it, and then you like smush it, and then you like cook it again. Smells good. She's not, she's not just cooking on a regular skillet. She got that cast iron skillet. What are you making, Sierra? Guacamole. Why oh, you look so happy with that guacamole? You love avocados, don't you? Yeah, I do. It's gonna be good with the carne asada. Where are you going? Oh yeah. Oh, we love the sound of sizzling. <laughs> Camping Mexican style. I'm here for it. What do you think, guys? I think that looks beautiful. Oh my god. It smells so good. Yo, this fire is cooking. We got some great food being over there cooked. Did you do all this fire or not? Absolutely. That's all me, though. All you. Where did you get the tortillas from? Dallas. Throw them all the way from Dallas. Mercado Mexico. Oh, so you some fresh tortillas. Some right real the, tortillas. Right on the fire. That's in Brie. It's almost like you grew up out here like this. I wish. <laughs> That's how you do it in Mexico. Oh, it's the moment of truth. How's it coming? The master chef. Honestly, I feel like we're the first people to cook carne asada over at this park. <laughs> hey, you just put this over some rocks? <laughs> you know, this is what camping is about. Being around the campfire, being out here with familia, friends, fresh tortillas from Dallas, carne asada on the grill, like, and also, of course, a cold one. Go camping and get out of the city.